Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R and the RK Stumbling Bear, and I'm a reader and a writer. And I'm back for another Nebula Reactions video, this time for the novelettes that were nominated. And again, I am going to talk about them in the order from the ones I least liked to the ones I liked the most. So the first one we're going to talk about today is Imagine, Purple-Haired Girl Shooting Down the Moon by Angela Liu. So in this, we are in a post-apocalyptic world, very much like a cyberpunk world. The main character and her best friend are both artists. So the art they do is to give people a different appearance or abilities to themselves. So it's digital artwork. And on the side, they're also prostitutes. And the main character, one while she is being a prostitute, one of her customers, one of her customers says that he knows that she does this type of work and asks her to make him something. And so she does. And the main character, it's her goal to make enough money to be able to escape the life that she has with her, with her friend and her friend has had some personality wipes done on her so that she can handle the abuse and trauma of the life that they're that they're living but because the main character took on this job she basically gets to see the inner workings of the underbelly and how she's fucked that she has no way out and everybody is just going to treat her as a commodity it is well written, it's just I am sick of these type of stories where the women are always oppressed. It's a very bleak look at a possible future and just post-apocalyptic isn't my thing. What can I say? Next we have Saturday Song by Wooly Talavi and this is a story and another story. So it's like a frame story set up. For the frame story, we have seven siblings whose names are the days of the week, who are basically immortal, godlike creatures who just sit and tell each other stories. Stories about every single creature on Earth. Now, the story they're telling at this time is about a young woman. Oh, I'm blinking on her name. We'll get more into her story in a moment, though. So it's called Saturday Song because Saturday is one of the siblings and she likes to sing her part of the story. So it's her turn to choose and so she chooses a story and all of her siblings know it. They each take a part saying the story. But she sets it up so it's not necessarily a linear story like this happened at this point and then this and then this and then this. So the story that they're telling is of a woman who was raised in a society with magic and following a certain god, but she can't dream. She's never been able to dream. And she's not considered right by her mother because she's gay. We go on to join her when she is with the woman that she has met and have fallen in love with. And then the one time we find that she dreams, it's because a god of death has come, but not for her, it's for her partner. And so then she wants revenge that her partner is now has now died. And this isn't another Shiggity story. I know Woli Talabi has a novel um, with Shiggity in the name as well. So the woman goes to enact her revenge, but knows that she is going to have to go back to what she knew as a child. And I'm not going to spoil how it ends. Like, that story, I really enjoyed. The framing story, not so much. I then have I Am AI by Ai Jing. Now, I know that I heard a lot of buzz about this the last year. Not in 2023, but in 2022. And I think that this has come back and been nominated again because it's now more widely available. But this is about a young woman who 
is a cyborg named Ai, or AI, and she's developed what most people think is an AI app for writing. She's a writer. And she does takes on writing jobs, so kind of think of like Fiverr and Upwork, that sort of thing. It is her greatest desire to become a full AI, so then she doesn't have to feel what is going around her, even while her friends and her neighbors are trying to get her to interact with them more, to see the joys that there are for being human. And it starts off in a very interesting way, where she feels like everybody's just using her as a battery they don't care about her life, not realizing they're trying to say how you're living isn't the healthiest. At least that's what I took from the story. And yes, while this is in a society that has a overbearing corporation that has taken over everything, the true antagonist in the story is the main character herself, against herself. So next is six versions of my Brother Found Under the Bridge by Eugenia Triantafalu. I've never learned how to say that name. I have read other things by her before, as she has been nominated in the past. And this is a story very much dealing with grief. The main character in her village, there is a bridge where there's a tunnel underneath it, and supposedly it leads to hell. So in her grief about losing her brother and seeing that after years, the grief of her losing her brother still affect and haunt her parents, she goes to see if she can make a trade or deal with the devil. And each time she goes, she comes away with another brother. But her brother's like only a one note. It it has only one emotion, happy or sad, fear, angry, and the girl finds herself kind of fading away. And I'm going to leave it there. I really like how this one wrapped up. I thought that it was pretty damn cool. Then we're going to talk about a short biography of a conscious chair by Renan Bernardo. And something that was interesting, it looked like this one was translated into English by the author himself. In this, it starts off with the chair being made, it becomes conscious, and it doesn't know why it is now conscious. Its creator then dies, and it gets shipped off to a furniture store, where it sits for many years, before being bought by an old man who is redesigning his house because his granddaughter is coming home. He lives with his grandson, their parents have died, and you know something about the death of the parents, the granddaughter is pissed at the grandfather about, but you don't really find out why until the very end. And this chair experiences the life of this family in little snippets, it's only what it sees while, it, while the characters are in the room with him. And I thought it was an interesting take of how furniture can become imbued with thoughts and memories of a family and how a chair has its own life cycle. This is very much a thought-provoking story that really connected with me. So last and my favorite, I have The Year Without Sunshine by Naomi Kritzer. I know I really loved her short story as well, but this is another one where you have a hopeful apocalyptic future kind of thing. Something has happened, I don't think they really go into much detail, but the sun gets obscured and people are living in a muted world. And in the story, a neighborhood gets together and bands together to help each other survive. They set up a system where if people are needing things, they could trade them back and forth. And then they go start reaching out to neighbors who haven't been using the system. Like it's a message board. Yeah, like it's a message board, just physical post board. And they meet a woman who has COPD and her husband, and her husband's doing his best to keep her alive. And then they work together to do that. They find more batteries to help them. They find help them find gas. They devise a way to do clean energy. 
And I thought this was a very interesting take where some of the services for the city are gone, but others are still there. Like there's still bus transportation, even if it's not always reliable, there's still electricity most of the time. And it's just a heartwarming story of how community comes together and the community not only is helping one another, but they're actually interacting and being present in each other's lives. Like the woman with COPD, she crochets. So then she starts teaching the little children who otherwise could be underfoot during other projects how to crochet, and they, they're starting to see her as a grandma. It's a very heartwarming story, and I find that this is the type of future stories I want to see. Not where everything has fallen apart and it's shit, but everything has fallen apart, but we're going to survive, and we're going to do so together in a good and healthy way. So yeah, Naomi Kritzer completely is my favorite story, and this has also been nominated for the Hugos, so those other novelettes are going to have a hard time beating this. Just saying. If you have read any of these, I would love to know your opinions, and if not, I'm linking them down below so you can go read them. Thank you, and have a great day.